Hi everyone, my name is Gloria. Welcome back to another video. Thanks so much for tuning in today. I'm gonna to be talking about more books that I wanna read this year in 2021. This video will specifically talk about the books that I want to read for the Read Your Bookshelf Challenge. This challenge was created by Chantelle from Chantelle and Intentional Life. I'll link her channel down below. But basically the challenge is to read more physical books of, off your shelves, the ones that you own. I don't own very many books, so I'm gonna try my best to choose books that I have. But for some, I'll probably get some books from the library or get them from Libby or an audiobook. Let's get started. So for January, the word was a homey house word, something to do with home in a building. It could be wall, room, light, window, mirror, staircase, etc. My intention was to read The Woman in the Window. This was on my December TBR. It's now February, still haven't gotten to it. I didn't read this book in January, but still hoping to get to it. The book that I did read in January that fulfilled that prompt was The Hidden Staircase, the second book in the Nancy Drew series. I am just making my way through the Nancy Drew books, so that one worked for this prompt. In February, in honor of Valentine's Day and the month of love, the prompt was to read a book with red on the cover or spine. So I have quite a lot of books that could have fit that prompt. The Handmaid's Tale was one of them. I have some books from the library that worked for that prompt. The Nickel Boys by Colson Whitehead and Homegoing by Ya Gassi. Both of these have some red on the cover that would work. Planning to get to these soon, if not for this particular challenge. But I actually decided to go with Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury. This is a classic, one of those like must read in your lifetime, maybe you should have read it in high school. I never did. I picked this one up at a thrift store. I'm actually reading it this one for the red prompt and I'm almost done. So this will be in my February wrap up. But if you don't know, this book follows a dystopian future. It was originally written in the 50s, but it follows a fireman who has to burn books for a living. So books are banned and you can't read them. And if you are caught with a book, they will come and burn all your books and burn your house down. So this fireman is, that's his job. He burns books and burns people's houses down. And then he has a moment of like awakening and realization and the story continues. It's really short. This book is a special edition. So it has a bunch of like history and like author's notes and whatnot, but it's pretty, it's, it's quite short. It's only like this big. So I'm almost done with it and I'll have my thoughts about it in the February wrap up. For March, the prompt is to read a book recommended by a friend. I have some options for this one. One of my friends, Brittany, really loves Grapes of Wrath. That is one of her favorite classics. It's set in depression era America. So that one is on my list. Also another sort of classic, it might be, I feel like it might be, but Gilead. This is my friend Lily's favorite book. I actually have that one as an audiobook, so I'll most likely be picking up Gilead. I actually don't really know what this one is about, kind of going into it blind. I feel like I know it has to do with an older man telling his story to a younger man or like to his son or something like that, but it's her favorite book and she said that the audiobook is great, so planning on that one. The other one that could also work for this prompt is We Were the Lucky Ones, which is a historical fiction. This one I also don't know much about, just that I like World War II historical fiction. This one was recommended to me by Amy, my mom-in-law, and me and her have very similar reading tastes. So if I'm feeling historical fiction, as opposed to the other two more classics, I'll probably pick this one up instead, but I'm leaving it open for a little bit of what I'm feeling in the moment. Next for April, we have the prompt to read a book with five or more words in the title. So I have a few books, obviously the first one, if I haven't read it by April, is The Woman in the Window by A.J. Finn. This is a thriller about a woman who's agoraphobic and doesn't leave her house and witnesses some sort of crime across the street peering into her neighbor's houses. So interesting, probably a little like dark and gritty, might be a little too dark and gritty for me, but it might be really interesting. And the movie's coming out, so I do need to read it and I will get to it eventually. If not by April, then maybe I'll read this one in April for the prompt. The other book is The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo by Stieg Larsson. I've had this book forever. One of those that I got from Costco like a million years ago when I was a teen and just never picked it up. This works for that prompt, so maybe I'll pick it up. This is also a thriller series. I know it has some hard topics and content warnings in there about sexual abuse, and I don't really know much else about it. 
but I'm assuming there's a girl with a dragon tattoo in it. And then another option is my grandmother asked me to tell you she's sorry by Frederick Bachman. I mentioned this earlier in another video that I want to get to a Bachman book this year. I own this one and a man called Uwe. So yeah, this is another option for that prompt for May. The prompt is a book that you should have read in high school. I feel like that there's a lot of books that fit under that theme. I own several classics that I should have or could have read in high school, but I didn't. One of them is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. I have this really pretty edition. I want to get to this book, so hopefully I would pick it up then. I don't know, but um, I also have Pride and Prejudice and Weathering Heights. I haven't read either of those either, so I feel like that would be a really good opportunity to pick up one of these must-read kind of gothic literature vibes. The other one that I was potentially thinking of was 1984 by George Orwell as well. It kind of fits into what the theme of the world is right now, as well as Brave New World. Those are both classic dystopian books, maybe similar to Fahrenheit 451 that falls in that category. If I'm not feeling Jane Eyre or Pride and Prejudice, maybe one of those three would work for me as well. For June, the prompt is to read a book with an animal on the cover. I don't own many books and I don't really own any with animals on the cover. But both Frederick Bachman's, which I want to get to, do. This one has a little cat. This one has a dog. So I want to get to these. The other thing I'm realizing is I have a lot of books with bees on the cover. And like I mentioned in my last video, I want to do a reading vlog about all the books about bees that I own. But this one could potentially work for June. It's called The Bees by Laleen Paul. I actually just picked this one up mostly for the cover because I think it's gorgeous. But also, this just sounds super interesting. This follows the life of a bee in a beehive whose name is like Flora number 464 or something. And it follows her story of like foraging and living in a hive. So it's a weird book. It's like a novel, but it's based from the perspective of a honeybee. So that just sounds really interesting um, and really weird. So that one could work for June. For July, the prompt is to read a book that starts with the same letter as your name starts with. So my name is Gloria, starting with the letter G. I don't own many books that start with the letter G. So this was a challenge, but the two I do own are both Christian nonfiction that I do want to read by John Mark Homer. This one is God Has a Name and Garden City. I mentioned Garden City in my 2021 TBR for the year for nonfiction, so I want to get to it. So that would be a good time to pick this one up if I haven't already. Yeah, both of those work. And I think like I mentioned earlier, if I didn't get to Gilead, that one also works because it starts with the letter G. Next for August, the prompt is to read a book in a series. I do want to continue the Outlander series. So if I haven't already, I'd pick up Dragonfly and Amber or potentially if I'm farther along the next book in the Outlander series. I also could read another Nancy Drew book because I kind of want to continue that series throughout the year. And maybe by August, I'll have started another series or I'm in the middle of one. So I kind of like to complete series and reading them soon or close together. I'm also reading the Lord of the Rings series with my husband. So one of those could potentially work. We're making our way very slowly through Fellowship of the Ring right now. So who's, who knows what book we'll be on in August. But yeah, keeping my options open for what I'm feeling in August. For September, the prompt is to read a translated book. For me, a book translated into English from another language. My book pick for that month will probably be Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy. This book is originally written in Russian, translated to English. I mean, if I really wanted to, I could probably try to read it in Russian because I do read some Russian, but it would be so hard <laughs> because I'm not the best at reading in Russian. I'm like at an elementary school level. Russian reading. But yeah, I've had this book again on my shelf for years. It's a big classic and want to get to and I love books that have to do with Russia or set in Russia so I feel like I need to read this one. I'll probably read only this in September given how big it is but we'll see. So for October the prompt is to read a book that is set in a different country than the one you are in. I feel like I have several options for that. I could pick up a book from the Outlander series. I know those go between Scotland and France and some of the later ones may be set in America so I don't know if it would work because I'm in the States. But I could also pick up a World War II historical fiction or another historical fiction set in a different country because I love that genre so that could potentially work. The one that I definitely own that is set in a different country is A Thousand Splendid Sons by Khalid Hosseini. I have this book and The Kite Runner. The Kite Runner is half set in Afghanistan and half set in the States. So I don't know if that would totally work, but this one 
is set in Afghanistan fully. Besides that, I don't really know much about this book. I just know that it's probably kind of like sad and heart-wrenching based on some blurbs on here and the main feel of the book. But I've been wanting to read Hosseini's work for a while now, so hoping to pick this one up then. For November, the prompt is to read a book with a night scene on the cover. The only one that I own that I haven't read is When Faith Fails, Finding God in the Shadow of Doubt by Dominic Doan. This is a local pastor here in Portland. It's a book about faith and doubt. It's quite short and I've been wanting to read this one so maybe I'll do it then. The other book that I own and have already read, so I'm not going to reread it, but I just want to recommend it. A quick little recommendation if you are doing this challenge and need a book with a night scene on the cover, I would highly recommend Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker. I read this book in 2020. It was one of my favorites. It's a nonfiction about sleeping and and the science of sleep and why we sleep and why it's important. So if you need a book for that prompt or another kind of starry moon sort of prompt, this one works and I would recommend it. And finally in December the prompt is to read a book with a winter element on the cover. Again, I don't own many books and this is the only one that I could find that had snow and some wintry vibes on the cover. This is The True Story of Hansel and Gretel, a novel of war and survival by Lewis Murphy. This is a World War II story, apparently a true story. I know that it's set in Nazi-occupied Poland and these two Jewish children are left in the woods and I'm assuming find their way to some sort of caregivers. I don't know where it ends or where it goes. It's probably sad. Anyways, those are some books that I wanna read throughout the year that work for that challenge. I might scooch in other ones that I'm more in the mood for or that work as well. Or maybe I'll buy some books later on that work for those prompts. So we'll see, but those are the ones that I'm sort of thinking on and planning on. And yeah, again, thank you to Chantel for making this challenge. I think it's really fun. Stay tuned for another video. I'm gonna be doing the Buzz Wordathon TBR as well kind of in a similar vein, each month has a different word and prompt. So I'll be making a video for that too. But thank you so much for tuning in and for watching and let me know what books you plan on reading for the Read Your Bookshelf Challenge if you're doing it. And let me know if you have any recommendations for some books for the challenge too. I'll take any recommendations along the way. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in another video. Bye.